Hey y'all, how you doing? It's Dr. B. This is just a, a quick video to show you how to um, navigate uh, Module 7. Um, so it's it's not open yet. I don't want to open it yet, but by the time you watch this video, it will be open. So my screen may look a little different than yours, but it'll be close enough, believe me. So um, this is for Module 7. And so when you get to Module 7, this is all about NCBI. Um, it's a massive warehouse and database uh, of all kinds of things molecular and we use it all the time so it makes sense that you would get exposed to it through this assignment so basically what you do click on NCB assignment it's going to take you to assignment 7 now your view is going to look a little different than mine um, yours is going to look a little bit more like this so um, the right here is the video you're watching now and there's two parts to it so basically what you're going to do uh, the first thing you're going to do and this is also in the video is you can open this up um, and it's opening up now and it looks like a really long document but it's not as long kind of as it looks um, so let me go ahead and kind of show you how you go here so as you're walking working through this you're like what do I do where do I start um, you're gonna want to have this open and then you put this to the side then the other thing this is where you're actually gonna answer um, questions for it so let me now pull that on the view that you can see and so that's this document and it tells you exactly where to go and what pages to start with um, and you can kind of see here that uh, it tells you where things are you know page uh, 12 of it then we're gonna start the beginning of page 38 and then from your date in part one fill this in so it literally goes through and tells you kind of how to do all these things um, and where are the instructions? Well, twofold. Number one, um, the actual database itself, like the, um, can be found a whole bunch of different ways. It's right here. I'm not going to click on it right now. Um, and then also the major parts of the work basically have you at um, beginning on page 38 of the major document. So on page 38 of the document, which is this, this is literally where you start. You literally, you, you can start from here if you want. Um, and it basically tells you how to go through, um, don't worry about this answer sheet, that's literally what you have. Uh, it has you go through search NCBI with the word tidiest. So for example, if I just control copy, and you're like, well, where do I do that? Again, here is the actual database itself, and then this looks a little convoluted, but it's not. You'll get the hang of it. So here's NCBI, and it's basically telling us in the instructions, okay, search NCBI with the word tidiest. So basically, I do that. Whoops, sorry. Um, um, let's see. Sorry, my cat was over here. Um, so I search the word tidiest, and there it is, and it's going to, ooh, it's a kind of scorpion. And so basically, um, it's going to ask you questions about it. How many records are there for Tidius? And it'll, of course, show you how many records there are. Um, see if there's any interesting ones. What's the common name for it? What phylum does it have? So all of these things are going to be on the uh, Word document of the ones that I want uh, you to answer. For Tidius, so the number of PubMed central records. Let me just kind of do that one with you. So if I look down at all the different literature, PubMed central records, there's 979, and just PubMed in general, there's 651. So that is what you would put um, right here. If it's PubMed central, you'd put 979. That's kind of how you do this. You literally just follow um, this entire document of asking questions, and the method of how you move down the actual document is here. It literally will tell you exactly how to click this, click that, all the way down. So that's just a little short video um, to help you kind of figure out how to navigate NCBI. So I know this sounds a little backwards, but I'm actually going to kind of do about a one minute overall of what NCBI can do. Um, so you have a little bit of an idea, um, get it going into it. So let's say I was interested in some particular kind of uh, gene. I don't know, we'll pick one. So P53 is a human gene. And you can see that already it knows it. And it can even tell me kind of what kind of animals it's in. Obviously, humans have it. It's a uh, tumor antigen or tumor suppressor protein. So I can search it, and it's going to give me a lot of information. And so some of the stuff we use a lot of time is, look, there's 61,432 nucleotide submissions. That means that, that people around the world put DNA sequences in this database. 
let me just give an example of one. Uh, Moose Musculus, this is a mouse. Um, somebody, and let's click on who, um, submitted to this a DNA sequence of part of the gene for the mouse. And it's 1,429 base pairs long, and it's messenger RNA, and its code number, a session number is this. Um, and so if I just click on that, I kind of get a little bit more information about it. I can see where this is taxonomically. I can see who put this in. This is the group that put it in. Um, I can see when they did it, which is 1998. Um, and if I keep scrolling down, I get a lot of information. This is the protein sequence of amino acids. I don't know how much you guys know about DNA and proteins, but almost all proteins start with methionine. That's the M right there. And here's the actual uh, DNA sequence of it. So that's a little bit about what it does. So if I have a particular kind of um, DNA that I find, and let me give you another example of that, I could do something like this. If I want to know what a piece of DNA might have come from, I can hit this thing called BLAST. And so if I have some DNA, which are nucleotides, I can literally click on this, and I'm just going to put in a DNA sequence. And I don't know exactly what organism it's from. So I just throw it in here. And then I just hit blast. And what's happening is the database is looking over hundreds of millions of sequences of DNA to find ones that would be a perfect match and then ones that are an almost perfect match and kind of like that. And it'll put them in order of the ones that are a perfect match at the top. So if I do have a little piece of DNA and I want to know what organism it came from, if we know, it will tell us. And you can kind of see here that all of these... Uh, are that are 100% matches, and by the way, this is query cover, meaning how much of this sequence uh, is aligned between the two and what percent identity. This says Borrelia burgdorferi, and you may or may not have heard that. I'm sure you've heard of its common name, but that's the bacteria that causes Lyme's disease. So that's another cool tool that uh, NCBI can do. So have fun with your um, activity, and if you have any questions, as usual, let me know.